I had zero knowledge previously about money management. And having a low salary, I thought it wasn't the right time to start learning about this topic. But I was wrong. Someone got me this book as a gift and it really changed the idea about how I should be making money. Here I represent the top 10 lessons I have learned from this book. Lesson number one, it changed the way I see mistakes. We used to be punished if we made mistakes, especially at school. But we learn from our mistakes. It has been proven a long time ago, a very efficient learning tool. Use the mistakes and learn from them. If one investment failed, just learn from it. Mistake equals new opportunity for success. As the author mentions, we either succeed or we learn. Playing it safe is bad. I was always trying to stay on the safe side, but keeping your money away and saving it for later is not gonna make you wealthy. Experiment and take small calculated risks. See where it goes. You will never know how big the potential is of an idea unless you take the risk to try it. What if you had the idea of an online bookstore? Oh, it's called Amazon. And this is how it started. Never stick to one job. Being academically brilliant will not guarantee a wealthy future. While you can have a high paying job, this is not the way how you can become wealthy. We should study money, how it works, how it flows, and how to make money work for us, not the opposite. Your job, especially when you are young, is only to gain experience. It will never make you rich, even if you had a small raise. Lesson number four, think how you will afford it. It's time to change your mindset. Instead of thinking I can't afford, for example, this car, start thinking how I can afford it. What changes to my life and my spendings should I be making in order to afford this thing? And this will push you to have more creative ways to generate more income. How to get an extra $50 per month. You will find a way, you will be surprised. I don't know, maybe you start selling cool socks online or something else, but don't be afraid to try. Lesson number five, pay yourself first. This makes a lot of sense. We usually pay everyone before paying ourselves. If you're working your whole life just to pay the bills and not enjoying your life, then why work at first? This is a life not worth living, honestly. But paying yourself first, enjoying your time, will force you to generate an extra income to pay the bills. But if you get your salary and simply pay your bills, you'll never be motivated to generate an extra passive income. Lesson number six was a turning point in my life. Assets versus liabilities. I honestly didn't know the difference. I even didn't know what is an asset or a liability. But this is absolutely important to understand. Briefly, an asset is something that puts money into your pocket at the end of the month. And a liability is the opposite. It's something that takes money out of your pocket every month. And your main goal is to grow the column of the assets and decrease the one of the liabilities. For example, your car is a liability. You pay for it every month, you pay for the gas every month, and if you wanna sell it, you're gonna sell it at a decreased price. Whereas renting a house, for example, is an asset. Shares, stocks, bonds, investments, these are assets. A good strategy suggested was the following. You might own a house, you can rent it for, for example, $1,000 per month, and you can live in a rent at a lesser price, $700 per month. So you are generating a $300 per month as a passive income. Once you understand the difference between assets and liabilities, you will start using your salary wiser. You will make better choices. Lesson number seven, surround yourself with people smarter than you. Stop hanging out with people that put you down and they think low of themselves. These are limited people and will limit your growth. Surround yourself with ambitious and smart people, have decent conversations, exchange ideas, and lift each other's spirit. More importantly, whenever you have a specific question, you know you have an expert friend who can help you. Lesson number eight, invest in your brain. In his book, he mentions that once he paid for a course $500, but this same course generated $1 million in return. So follow the knowledge, read some books, attend seminars, take some courses. These will create endless opportunities. Lesson number nine, borrowing money is not actually evil. If you know how to borrow money and not put yourself in a huge debt, this will make a big difference because debt is tax-free. So if you borrow money, don't pay taxes on it. For example, if my salary is $1,000 per month, I will be paying something around $200 to $300 as taxes. But if I borrow $1,000, I'll be paying nothing as taxes. And this is how you can make extra money. The rich people borrow money to buy assets that will generate more money. But the poor people borrow money to buy liabilities like cell phones, cars, fancy suits to make them at the end poorer and poorer. Last but not least, being rich is not about earning more. So as a final lesson, it was obvious that the difference between the rich and the poor is not about the salary. It is the way of thinking, 
how the rich know how to generate passive income, how to generate more money, where to put the effort. Whereas the poor mindset is only to consume more, try to impress. So you can be generating a six figure per month and still be poor, living paycheck to paycheck. So choose which side you wanna be on. See you next time.